she never forgave Clark Gable for what happened on set. Gone with the Wind is the most successful box office hit of all time, and the iconic performances lit up the silver screen. It's been 80 years since the film captivated audiences and their imaginations, and today it's a classic. Those who have seen the movie know the story, but many don't know what went on behind the scenes of the legendary film. Many also don't know much about the men and women who made Gone with the Wind an iconic film. If you're one of the people, you're in for a treat. You're about to learn what really happened while filming Gone with the Wind, and some of the facts will blow your mind. Film began before Scarlett was cast. The directors and producers were in a hurry to start filming, and they began doing so before casting the female lead character, Scarlett O'Hara. The character was already well known from Margaret Mitchell's book, and the casting call drew some of the most prominent actresses in the late 1930s Hollywood. Producer David O. Selznick publicized the search for Scarlett, and it was when they saw Vivian Lee they knew they had their Scarlett. By the time she signed up to star in the film, they would already been filming for a month. Clark didn't want to cry. Today, male actors in Hollywood have no problem showing their feelings on screen, and it doesn't make them feel any less masculine. This wasn't the case in the 1930s, and men wanted their characters to be dashing and sturdy and not emotional, including Clark Gable. When his character, Rhett Butler, learned Scarlett miscarried after falling down the stairs trying to get away from him, the script called for him to become visibly distraught and emotional. Unfortunately, Clark objected and believed crying on screen would hurt his career and image. He was so worried that two versions of the scene were filmed, just in case. Hattie McDaniel has roots to the Civil War Hattie McDaniel is the actress that played Mammy in the film and is also an essential part of American history. Performing in Gone with the Wind was more than a job for the actress. The role was personal. The Civil War had repercussions that deeply affected her family. Hattie's father, Henry, was a freed slave from Virginia and fought for the Union in the United States Colored Infantry. Sadly, Henry was injured during the war, and Hattie's mother survived slavery as well. Technicolor One thing that made Gone with the Wind stand out from other movies was the filming. The colors were so vivid and vibrant that Hollywood created a new category so it could be acknowledged, called color cinematography. Although Technicolor had been around for years, it was never used on this scale. All seven Technicolor cameras were used for the burning of Atlanta scene, giving the movie a chance at another Oscar. From Blue to Green The crew on Gone with the Wind didn't have the technology we have today, which shows how much effort went into creating the movie. There was one thing the producers didn't want to overlook from Margaret Mitchell's novel, the color of Scarlett O'Hara's eyes. The book described them as a vivid green, but Vivian Lee's eyes were blue. The eye color problem was resolved in post-production. They went frame by frame and doctored the actress's eye color to make them a vivid green like the character in the novel. This was likely very time-consuming, but it was worth it. Too Much of a Lady Thanks to the movie, Vivian Lee became a two-time Oscar winner and one of Hollywood's most elite actresses. As professional as she was, there was one thing the actress wouldn't do. In one of the film's biggest turning points, Scarlett is starving and tries to eat rotten vegetables from a field that's been pillaged, and she chokes when she tries to eat it. Vivian was an English woman of a respectable upbringing, and she wouldn't make the coughing and choking sounds because it was unladylike. Fortunately, her co-star, Olivia de Havilland, made the sounds for her, and the producers dubbed the sound into the mix and you'd never know it wasn't Vivian making the sounds. The Accent Other than Clark Gable, most of the lead cast were British. Vivian Lee was born in India under British colonial rule. When the actress went for a screen test, she spoke with an accent, the Queen's English. There was a debate about whether she would be right for the part, but the film's original director, George Cooker, fought for her to stay. David Selznick wrote a letter to justify her Englishness as being closer to a southerner than a Yankee. The most famous line was almost cut. Cary Grant said one of the most famous lines in the film, and of all time. Rhett and Scarlett were arguing when Rhett said the legendary line, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. 
Many people don't know that this line almost had to be cut from the film. The Hayes Code censors didn't think the line was appropriate, and David had to fight for the line to pass. This wasn't the only time a character said damn, and it was said earlier in the film at 12 Oaks in the epithet, Damn Yankees. Bananas and Peanuts Writing the script for Gone with the Wind was a long, agonizing ordeal. Writing the script was so crazy that a whole play was based on the writing process called Moonlight and Magnolias. The screenplay went through numerous changes and was constantly changing hands. They even brought in F. Scott Fitzgerald, the writer of The Great Gatsby, for help. Writer Ben Hasht was asked to rewrite the script and had to work 20-hour shifts for a week to complete it. The producer, David Selznick, wouldn't even give him and director Victor Fleming a lunch break because he worried it would slow the process. Instead of letting them leave for lunch, David brought them bananas and peanuts to fill them up so they could work constantly. The Burning of Atlanta One of the most iconic scenes in the film is when Scarlet and others flee from Atlanta as it burns. It makes you wonder how they pulled off ammunition explosions and the massive firestorm back in the 30s. Today, a scene like that's easy, but in the 30s, they didn't have the technology we have today. The fire was the first scene filmed, and it cost $25,000. The producers took a considerable risk because the entire film would be jeopardized if the scene didn't go perfectly. The crew used old sets, including the King Kong set, and set them on fire for the scene, and it came out better than anyone imagined. A Little White Line Vivian Lee won her first Oscar for Best Actress for her performance as Scarlett O'Hara in the film, and it's said she and her character share the same genealogy. If you think this is too good to be true, you're right. This is partially correct. But the execs wanted people to believe otherwise. Scarlett is French and Irish, and it was published in magazines that the actress and her character shared the same heritage. But it was all for publicity. Vivian Lee is Irish, like her character. But she isn't French, she's Scottish. Olivia de Havilland Actress Olivia de Havilland played Melanie in Gone with the Wind and has outlived the other leads in the film. She also survived all but one cast member. Olivia was born in Tokyo to British parents during World War I. Like her co-star, Vivian Lee, Olivia won an Oscar for Best Actress twice. The actress had a long, happy life and passed away on July 26, 2020 in Paris, France, at the age 104. Just one scene together. Gone with the Wind's four lead characters dominated the screen and made the film what it was today. The characters included the beautiful and reckless Scarlett O'Hara, Rhett Butler, a dashing man, Ashley Wilkes, and Melanie Hamilton. While these are the four lead characters, there's only one scene with all of them together simultaneously. It's the scene where Rhett brings Ashley home in a stupor after visiting Belle Watling, and Scarlett and Melanie rush to his bedside. This is the only scene in the whole movie where the four leads are together. Dummies The film's producers and directors wanted Gone with the Wind to be the most epic film in Hollywood history, but they didn't realize their vision was more challenging to execute than expected. For example, they ran into a problem when shooting the scene with the wounded Confederate soldiers. Producer David Selznick wanted no less than 2,500 extras in the scene, but the Screen Actors Guild didn't have that many people available at the time. David was adamant about having 2,500 dead soldiers in the scene, and rather than using people, they scattered a thousand dummies among the actors. The plan worked, and people had no idea that they weren't real people lying on the ground. Victor Fleming was a busy man. Four months before Gone with the Wind opened, another epic color film, The Wizard of Oz, took the cinema by storm. If you're wondering what this has to do with Gone with the Wind, they were directed back-to-back -back by Victor Fleming. Victor was caught between the two most significant projects of his career and was the second director on set, so he decided to tap out due to exhaustion. This put the movie in jeopardy, but it was saved when a third director was brought on named Sam Wood. Leslie Howard wasn't a reader. Leslie Howard had one of the four leading roles in Gone with the Wind and played Ashley Wilkins. The actor was a Shakespearean stage actor, but she didn't like to read, which some found strange. He admitted that he'd never read Margaret Mitchell's novel, which is 1,037 pages long, 
which is intimidating for a book lover, making it impossible for someone who doesn't like to read to get through. Instead, he left the research to his co-stars. A Fun Prank Clark Gable was known for playing practical jokes on his co-stars in between takes, and one was at Hattie McDaniel's expense. Clark already knew the actress because the pair starred in past films, so he decided to have fun with her. The pair had one scene together and Rhett hands Mammy a glass of whiskey in the scene. There was supposed to be tea in the glass, but Clark replaced it with real whiskey without Hattie knowing. She downed the glass before realizing what she was drinking and looked surprised as she started spluttering. Hattie smelled the drink before the second take, and it was the one that made the final cut. She never forgave Clark Gable for what happened on set, but knew it was all in fun. It's all in the book. Vivian Lee played Scarlett O'Hara perfectly. She was mesmerizing and melodramatic, just like her character. When Vivian was backstage, she'd read her personal copy of Margaret Mitchell's novel. She'd sit in her chair reading from the book, but she wasn't trying to research her character. Vivian admitted that she used the book to show director Victor Fleming that, at the end of the day, the literature called the shots. Whether Victor ever picked up on the hint is unknown. Vivian couldn't dance. Vivian Lee was many things. She was an intelligent woman with an expensive education and a flair for elegance. She even managed to convince millions of viewers that an English woman could play a southern belle on the silver screen. The one thing the actress wasn't was a dancer. There weren't many dancing scenes in Gone with the Wind, and the actress struggled while shooting the Confederate ball scene. In distant shots, it isn't Vivian dancing, it was her dancing double, Sally DeMarco. Unequal Pay In the 1930s, it wasn't uncommon for men to make more money than women in Hollywood even when women did more work, including the cast of Gone with the Wind. Vivian Lee worked for 125 days and was paid $25,000. Clark Gable worked for 71 days and made $120,000. Something like this wouldn't fly today, but it was the norm in the 30s. 